If you've been following me for any part of the last year on any platform, you'll know that I've been mashing together different Squishmallows on this app called Procreate. And even last week, I did end up making one of these Squishmallows in real life, mashing together four real Squishmallows and sewing it all together. Unfortunately, that did mean I had to tear apart four Squishmallows, which is not only wasteful, but also not very cheap. So I wanted to find another way to bring these mashups to life. So I thought, why not make these creations out of air dry clay so I can still hold my babies in my hand without destroying for other Squishmallows. I got this idea from another YouTuber, Mariah Elizabeth, who recently has been making some of her characters out of air dry clay, and she's making this kind of blob universe, and I thought that would be perfect in practice with these Squishmallows. So today I'm gonna to be creating three of my mashups out of clay, painting them and varnishing them so that I have three adorable little permanent figurines. <laughs> So the first one I'm going to be doing is a mashup with the wings, beak, and comb of a chicken, scuba diving gear from this Hello Kitty, spots from a giraffe, and the color purple from this tulip. It created this cute little purple spotted, what looks like to me, a penguin. So without further ado, let's start making it. All right, so the internet told me to start with a slip, which is basically mixing a third water with two thirds clay. But honestly, I think the clay I bought might not be the best brand because it did not mix no matter how hard or how long I tried. But I think it did its job later on. So I started by creating this oval shaped sphere. Is there a better word for that? Out of clay. Then I used the slip to attempt to smooth out any creases and cracks. Then I made these triangle shapes and molded them into the flippers. And this little flat tool that I bought honestly helps for blending it the most. Um, it gets it kind of like seamlessly into the existing ball of clay that I already have. And then I take my fingers and the slip and smooth it out and smooth out all the cracks again. So I did the same method for the wings. Then it was time for the part that I was dreading the most, which was the mat. It just feels like it was gonna be so delicate. But I ended up making a little snake out of clay and I curled it onto the blob. And I used that flat tool again to smooth out all the outer edges. And this is the part I was dreading because it's just such a thin line to blend out. But honestly, this little tool came to my rescue because I was shocked at how easily this applied. So I didn't want to touch the inside at all to keep it kind of smooth. So I just did this part to the outside. And at this point, I was realizing it started to look eerily similar to an Among Us character. <laughs> But I persisted and I made the three tiny little beans and attached them to the top for the rooster's comb. And I'm not gonna lie, I was so proud of how this turned out. I have never worked with air dry clay before and I was feeling like, I don't know, you just never know how things are gonna go. And I really wanted this project to be awesome. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Up next, we'll be doing this cute little burger lemur. It's a mashup with the ears of a corgi, this hat and burger from this random pom pom -per and Squishmallow, the rib cage of this skeleton unicorn, and the face of this pink lemur. So let's get sculpting. Now that I've already made one, I am starting to feel confident in my abilities and maybe too confident going into the second one because the blob shape was a bit tougher this time, I think because I was working outside and didn't realize how quickly the outside of the clay would start to dry. Um, it definitely made smoothing out the cracks a little bit more difficult this time. But once I got it all smooth, I made more coils for the lettuce. Then I flattened them and cut out these little chunks just in an attempt to kind of form these lumps and bumps for the different pieces of lettuce. And that worked okay, but I really was overlooking how many <laughs> tiny cracks I made with the knife tool that I had. Uh, I finished the bottom layer, then added two triangles for the cheese, made another top layer, and this looks fast, but it actually took about 30 minutes to apply all of these. Then I added on the little acorn hat, which was actually a lot easier to apply than I thought once again, the little ears. And last minute, I also added on a little snout just to give it some more 3D elements. And once I was happy with the results, it was time to let it dry. And finally, we have this one, which includes the beak and rainbow wings of a parrot, the brown patches of this corgi, the frosting and sprinkles of this tuxedo Sam, 
and the straw and boba from this taro boba squishmallow. And cue the clay. Okay, for this one, I shockingly made another oblong sphere, then made these smaller oval spheres for the wings. After I attached them, I worked to make them look almost like clouds since they're supposed to be this like fluffy, feathery wings. So I just kind of did that by using my thumb and making little divots in it. And I think it looked pretty close to the source material. So then I made the beak and attached that. And once again, this little tool is just gonna be your best friend on these little attachments because this worked seamlessly. There's also this drizzle on the top and I was thinking I might just paint it on and try to make the paint thick, but I'm really glad I ended up going in there with another layer and just adding it on top just to give it a more 3D effect. Then I made this tiny cylinder, hollowed it out a bit with this tool that I have, and it did end up looking pretty much exactly how I wanted, like a straw. And so I made a hole in the top of the head and stuck that in there. And I am going to add on sprinkles, but after the fact. So here is how it turned out, and it's also ready to dry. Now in hindsight, I probably should have made little balls of tin foil and then covered them in clay so that the lumps weren't so solid because what was supposed to take 48 hours to dry actually took a full week and the bottom really did not want to dry so i had to move it to this drying rack but after all that we're finally ready to paint to make it easier to follow for you all i'm going to show you like one by one which ones i'm painting but as i was working on these there were some of them in the background so just kind of ignore the fact that you might see some of the later paint in these clips but i'm gonna go in order so up first we have our little scuba diving chicken so i mixed up a lighter purple with this acrylic paint from blick and applied it and luckily this one only really took one coat and some tiny touch-ups here and there oh also i was filming this during the eclipse which did not look like much from california but it did cast these crazy shadows on everything so the lighting is a little weird here so i added on the white belly which i know the clay was already white but i wanted to make sure the consistency was all the same for the gloss that i'm going to apply later then i carefully painted the flippers and the comb and it was back to our dreaded mask i mixed up a light pink and with the world's smallest brush i did get into all of these tiny cracks and honestly i was shocked at the lack of mistakes i made you'll see a lot of touch-ups happen later on especially with that lettuce for some reason but i really did almost perfectly on this mask so once all that was dry i came in with my posca paint markers and i added in the beak and the eyes before tackling all of these spots and let me tell you this made my hand cramp so bad and took way longer than i thought so while you watch me add them on, I did want to give a shout out to my lovely husband. We walked to the craft store, bought these paint markers. Then I realized I got ivory instead of white and the purple was not dark enough. And also I forgot to get a hot pink for one of the other ones. So we walked back to get more markers again, only for us to get all the way back home and realize I forgot the hot pink again. So to not waste more time, he walked all the way there and back a third time while I painted these purple spots on. So shout out to him. And anyway, once all these were done, I added another coat to the beak and finally added those tiny white dots in the eyes. And here it is fully painted. So after more drying and a coat of varnish, here is the final result. It truly is the cutest thing I think I have ever made with my two hands. I love the colors and I think I executed this mask perfectly, even though I was so worried about it. In the comments of the original video, you all decided to name this one Flappers. And I think that is a perfect name for him. And I just want to look at him all day. Also, I really wanted this Lazy Susan shot, but don't have one. So I improvised with our record player. So up next, I painted the burger one, which by the way, I looked at the comments on that original video too. And the top comment is Little Demon Burger, which I think it's a little mean, but does kind of fit perfectly. So this one took so long to paint all the lettuce and the cheese and the burger and I kept accidentally getting the brown from the burger on top of the green and the yellow and those colors were really sheer so I ended up having to do multiple repaints of those but finally I got all of the burger parts done. So I painted the brown hat and ears next which was really easy luckily and then I did the little tiny white face mask before carefully covering the whole thing in this light black dark gray mixture I made up 
I will say this was the hardest one out of all of them for some reason. Just avoiding all the little parts and trying really hard to keep the line consistent all the way around. But I think I got there in the end. So lastly, I just had to add on the dark pink to everything with the paint marker. Initially, I was going to paint it, but I couldn't mix up the right color, hence why Travis had to go all the way back to the craft store. So I did end up putting this darker pop pink over everything. And lastly, I added on the eyes and that tiny dot of white, let them dry and added the varnish. And here is little demon burger all complete. This one definitely took the most skill to create and I think he shares an extreme resemblance to the source material. Also, his tiny little snout is just so cute. Lastly, our little parrot, which is named Sprinkle, by the way. I didn't realize at first just how many gradients is on this. And honestly, I'm pretty good at blending colors, but this blue was just so sheer that I had to come back with multiple coats, which was annoying because then every time I had to blend it again and it just took a long time. So I did the same thing to the back painted the top white, and then added the brown bits from the Corgi. Why is bits such a British sounding word? I added the brown bits from the Corgi. Anyway, next came the little beak, which was giving me flashbacks to the scuba goggles, but was a bit more difficult because, I don't know, I was sloppy and had to paint multiple coats to cancel out the darker blues and purples under it. So that just took a long time. But then I moved on to the wings, which were honestly the most fun to paint, doing a gradient from yellow to green to blue to pink. And I did this with the first wing. Then are you ready for this transition? Bam, I did the second wing off camera, just like a beauty YouTuber. So I painted the straw blue. Then it was time for the paint markers, which on this one were honestly just the eyes. Oh wait, no, it was more purple dots I had to draw. So this time with a lighter paint marker, I had to draw on all the little boba balls. And finally, my secret weapon was these plastic sprinkles I found on Amazon, which honestly looked just like the real thing. So I glued them on with this tacky glue and this was super tedious. So I apologize for how awful all of these shots are. But once I was done, I think it looked really good. So I varnished it all and here is the final result. I think this one turned out really, really cute with the gradient wings and the boba. Those sprinkles just look so real. And I also like that his eyes are a little farther apart because it just gives him a little derpy vibe. Here is how they all look together. And I am just so stinking happy with how they turned out. For it being my first air dry clay project, I could not have asked for a better result, honestly. They are just so adorable. I'm gonna have to find somewhere to display them. And I think I've literally sent a photo of these to everyone in my life at this point. Thank you so much for watching this. I think if I had to pick, Flappers would be my favorite. He is just the cutest little penguin chicken scuba diving thing that I've ever seen. And I think the spots turned out super awesome. But I truly love all of them so much. I think they really go together as like a little threesome. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite. And honestly, I have over 40 videos in this series, so we have a lot that we could make in the future. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments which of these three is your favorite. Bye!